Good evening all, it's John, the old geek once again. And let's cut to the chase. I only have three more first edition AD&D modules I can review. At least for now. Next up is one I've been holding back on reviewing. People have strong opinions either way about this one. It's I6 Ravenloft. I feel like I should have um, recorded this one at night. Surely one of, if not the most famous scenario in AD&D history, the original I6 was written by Tracy and Laura Hickman and was released in 1983. It was well received and spawned a sequel in the form of I-10, Ravenloft 2, The House on Griffin Hill. There was a setting box set and a reworking of the original module during the second edition era, and continual expansions and revisions through later editions. Most recently it was repackaged into Curse of Strahd for 5th edition D&D. But before I get into the reasons for its enduring legacy, I'm going to be predictable and talk about presentation. This module, without doubt, marks the aesthetic high point for AD&D Adventures. The artwork by Clyde Caldwell is consistently outstanding, from that iconic cover image of Strahd surveying his domain, through numerous evocative internal pieces. I would argue that no module has ever had such consistently high quality art. The tone, variety and impact of the pieces bring it to life. So with that in mind, rather than put the usual little small images in the corners of my videos, I will be blanking out my face at various times in this video with big, big images. And then there are the maps. Dave Sutherland's work could often be patchy, but these were his zenith. The 3D renditions of Castle Ravenloft are beautiful and give an excellent idea of the sheer vertical scale of it all. But there is a drawback with them. While they are beautiful to look at, the perspective makes them rather difficult to use during play. When I last ran this module, I redrew them all in 2D and used my 2D workings in combination with the original module maps and that worked fine. Text is florid and descriptive. Typical Hickman in places, but it works. Sadly there are quite a few typos and formatting errors as was common with 1983 TSR. But listen to this. I am the ancient. My beginnings are lost in the darkness of the past. I am not dead, nor am I alive. I am undead forever. From the first moment you glance at the cover, the inspiration for Ravenloft is clear for all to see. It's an homage to Dracula. The story revolves around Count Strahd von Zarevich, a bitter and pitiful soul who through his own actions condemned himself to a life of undeath. Unlife, whatever you want to call it. It contains all the vampire tropes. All of them. A broken heart, unrequited love, a foggy night, wolves howling in the forest, an imposing castle, a decrepit inn with a faded sign hanging at an angle. But no matter how predictable and stereotypical this all is, this is how it should be. The adventure begins with the party in an inn. Yes, another trope. A mysterious stranger brings them a letter, a desperate plea for help. They answer the plea, and in doing so become trapped in the land of Barovia, a cursed domain ruled by Strahd. In order to escape, they must defeat him, and thus lift the curse on the land. So yeah, go to castle, kill vampire, job done, easy right? Of course not. 
Listen to this quote from the module text. When playing Strad, above all, keep these three things in mind. There are three things listed, I'm just going to focus on the first. One, Strad chooses when he attacks. Strad is supposed to be a genius. Play him as one. Whenever he is aware of the PC's positions, he is allowed to make an attack how and where he wants. His attacks must be timed to be most advantageous to him. To do that, Strad must move around during the adventure. A great many adventures were presented with the big bad guys in their lairs at the end of the adventure. Yes, many DMs brought their own twists and changed this, but it is fair to say that Ravenloft was the first module to specifically say, play the bad guy intelligently. It explicitly stated that Strahd should move around, toy with the PCs, and engage with them when it most suits him. To add to this, for the stated party levels, 5th through to 7th, he is an incredibly powerful foe. Combine his mechanical potency with the module's direct instructions and the party's task becomes insanely difficult. In a sense, this module liberated DMs. Yes, I guess some DMs were already running games with intelligent enemies, but now it was being declared to the hobby as a whole. At the heart of I6 is an atmospheric and intelligent dungeon crawl. Castle Ravenloft is a big old place stuffed with suitably horror-themed encounters, tricks and traps, many of which are almost as lethal as Strahd himself. The challenge this module presents is unrelenting. One of the neatest parts of the module comes in the form of its card reading mechanics. Early on in the adventure, the party can stumble upon a gypsy camp with a fortune teller. Certain aspects of the module are affected by the cards they draw here, including Strahd's ultimate motives, and the locations of certain key items and individuals. This has the potential to be a highly entertaining role-playing interlude, and gives the adventure a real sense of depth. As with any adventure, there have been those who insist on finding a way to criticise anything that is held up in high regard. Sometimes these criticisms are unfounded, they often are, but sometimes it's with good reason. Here's an example. I6 is an attempt to bring classic gothic horror to AD&D, and it mostly works, but it can at times feel a little contradictory when the party are slashing and fireballing their way through monsters. Typical AD&D has combat that breaks the atmosphere presented by this module. Plus, does horror really work in a D&D environment? A key facet of the horror genre is the seemingly hopeless nature of it all. And yes, the party here are facing an almost insurmountable task. But core to D&D is the fact that adventurers over time become more potent, more powerful, more magical. And this is the antithesis to horror. It is a fact that Call of Cthulhu is a better system for running horror games than AD&D. Another issue is that at times the module can feel jarringly anachronistic. While the Dracula myth has medieval roots with Vlad the Impaler, the tales and tropes that Ravenloft is based on are largely 19th century, and the default feel of AD&D is mostly based on four or five hundred years earlier, more Vlad the Impaler time. And then there's the difficulty level of the adventure. This is compounded by Hickman pulling his usual heavy-handed introduction stunt, giving the party no option to flee. If a DM was to use this module as a part of an ongoing campaign, then adjustments would need to be made, as it is truly a killer module on par 
with the likes of Tomb of Horrors and the Hidden Shrine of Tomachan. I recently ran it for a group of experienced gamers using pre-gen characters towards the upper end of, upper end of the suggested power range. They were well equipped and supplied with suitable spells and items for the task in hand. And they all died. Ravenloft has also stirred emotions regarding what it spawned. I've read, but never actually run the sequel. That's I-10, the house on Griffin Hill. And it appears to be a convoluted mess. Likewise, I've not used the second edition material, as I dropped out of the hobby around the time it appeared. I know some people love it, but it's a genre I would much rather play using a different game. It was very much milked, though, much as Dragonlance was. The 5th edition reworking, Curse of Strahd, does seem to be very highly regarded. But what's his take on the setting material, in the form of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, is an utter abomination, highlighting everything that turns me off current 5th edition culture. But back to the original module. For all its flaws and deserved criticism, I6 fully deserves the praise it has received, and it has had a lot of it. If you can switch your mind off to the clashes in tone between mechanics and material, you will find a rewarding, challenging and highly entertaining adventure here. Strahd is a magnificent villain both in his capabilities and his personality, but even more so in the freedom of options he presents for the DM. Every gamer should try Ravenloft at least once. It's an excellent module for a one-shot with pre-generated characters, a change of pace, or a break from an ongoing campaign. Just be very afraid if your DM throws your, ca your carefully nurtured campaign characters into Barovia. I give Ravenloft 8 out of 10. Yes, there are issues with its tone fitting AD&D mechanics and its excessive difficulty. But when all things are considered, it delivers where it most matters. It's fun, it's challenging, and the tropes work. And the artwork. Oh, that artwork. Bravo, Clyde Caldwell. Bravo. Fog, look, fog. <laughs>